And uh, now back to uh, the uh, uh, session. And uh, I will call on the floor Professor uh, Johannes uh, Boer, uh, Chair of the Department of Media and Information, uh, Michigan State University, and Associate uh, Editors, Telecommunication uh, Policy. Uh, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Your Excellency, honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure and honor to serve as the chairperson of this session and to moderate three excellent speakers. This is the session that you probably all have been waiting for with great anticipation. I regret to tell you, though, that you have to wait a little bit longer until you can access the report. I think it's under embargo until about 10.30, and there will also be digital copies at the end of the session uh, available for you. I am, as was said in the introduction, I am mainly a researcher. I work at a university. I have for many, many years worked with regulators, public policymakers, uh, people from industry to help them understand and, and work, find better ways to harness information and communication technology for society. And I have to say this report is unique as was already mentioned, because it is driven by the member states of the ITU. Uh, it is the one index that is available globally that is most strongly based in consultation with individual members, and also it requires a lot of input from the member states. So I also would like to uh, recognize everybody for the effort to contribute this report. Now, this morning's session will have three experts from uh, the ITU's uh, ICT Data and Statistics uh, Division, and I will introduce them as they uh, get to the floor and uh, present their insights. First, we have Dr. Rati Skrednazi. Uh, he is the head of the ICT Data uh, and Statistics Division at the ITU. The floor is yours, please. Good morning. It is my pleasure to present to you uh, the latest edition of the Measuring the Information Society report. This annual report presents a global and regional overview of the latest developments regarding information and communication technologies based on internationally comparable data and agreed methodologies. The report starts with an overview of the most important long-term trends in the ICT sector. The second and third chapters are devoted to the ICT development index, both at the global level and the regional level. The area of ICTs is very dynamic and another digital revolution is approaching, one which will transform business, government and society. Four emerging ICT trends, which are at the heart of this revolution, are analyzed. Namely, the Internet of Things, cloud computing, big data analytics, and artificial intelligence. Last but not least, this year's report features for the first time country profiles, highlighting the ICT market structure and the latest developments in 192 economies worldwide. Let me introduce the main findings of the first chapter. There has been sustained growth in the availability of communications in the past decade, led by growth in mobile cellular telephony and more recently in mobile broadband. The number of mobile cellular subscriptions worldwide now exceeds the global population. One of the key findings that emerges from the ITU data collection is the rapid growth in mobile broadband services. The number of mobile broadband subscriptions worldwide now exceeds 50 per 100 inhabitants. The advent of smartphones and tablets 
and introduction of new mobile technologies is accelerating this trend. With LTA now available to most mobile users, there is almost linear growth in the number of individuals using the internet. According to ITU estimates, now 48% of individuals are using the internet. The number of fixed telephone subscriptions has continued to fall. The total number of these subscriptions has fallen from a peak of 1.26 billion in 2006 to an estimated 972 million in 2017. Worldwide, the number of fixed broadband subscriptions has risen to an estimated 979 million in 2017, a figure which for the first time exceeds the fixed telephone subscriptions. Since 2013, the number of active mobile broadband subscriptions is growing rapidly in developing countries and in LDCs. Despite the overall growth, there are substantial digital divides between countries and regions, and between developed and developing countries, particularly LDCs. There are twice as many mobile broadband subscriptions per 100 inhabitants in developed countries compared to developing countries. Most mobile subscribers worldwide now have access to higher quality networks. However, this transition has not been immediately paralleled by a comparable upsurge in the number of internet users. Worldwide, the number of fixed broadband subscriptions has risen from 220 million in 2005 to some estimated 979 million in 2017. The most striking feature of this chart is the exceptionally low penetration rate that it shows for LDCs. I give you one example. The ITU Africa region, with a population of almost 1 billion, is estimated to have only some 4 million fixed broadband subscriptions fewer than the number of fixed broadband subscriptions in Belgium, which has a population of less than 11.5 million. But it should be noted that the rate of growth has been grown, so some extent dependent on the prior availability of fixed telephone networks which are much less widespread in many developing countries and particularly LDCs than they are in developed countries. The bandwidth available has also risen rapidly, particularly in developed countries. Charts show the uneven distribution of fixed broadband subscriptions by speed. Bandwidth available through fixed broadband networks in developing countries is much less than in developed countries. The latest ITU data estimate that more than half of the world's households now have access to the internet at home, compared with less than 20% in 2005. Growth ranged between 7.5 and 13.5% each year between 2000 and 2015. But the rate of growth in the last two years has been slower, at or below 5%. Households in developed countries are almost twice as likely to be online as those in developing countries, and more than five times as likely as those in LDCs. ITU's Connect 2020 targets agreed in 2014 call for 50% of households in developing countries and 50% of households in LDCs to have internet access by 2020. By 2017, it is estimated that 84.4% of households in developed countries will have internet access, compared with 42.9% in developing countries, 
and just 14.7% in the LDCs. As can be seen from chart, the gap between LDCs and developing countries in general appears to be widening. Though the figure for LDCs is now close to achieving the Connect 2020 target set in 2014. Similarly, the percentage of individuals using the internet in developed countries, developing countries and LDCs are approaching ITU's Connect 2020 targets. The chart shows a substantial digital divide between developed countries in which 81% of individuals are now estimated to use the internet and developing countries in which the figure is 41.3%. And the similar digital divide between these groups of countries and the LDCs for which the comparable figure is 17.5%. ITU's Connect 2020 targets agreed in 2014 called for a proportion of individuals using the internet to reach 50% in developing countries and 20% in LDCs by 2020. There are significant differences in the level of internet adoption by different groups within society. In the report, particular attention has been paid to the digital gender gap, while increasing attention is also being paid to differences between age groups. There is a significant gender digital divide. Data compiled by ITU suggests that this digital gender gap is relatively small in developed countries, more pronounced in developing countries, and substantial in the LDCs. These charts suggest that the digital gender gap fell between 2013 and 2017 in developed countries. The gap is de in developed countries is now estimated to be just 2.8%. It is much more pronounced at 16.1% in developing countries. The digital gender gap is most pronounced rising to 32.9% in LDCs. In LDCs, only one out of seven women is using the internet compared to one of five men. Digital divide between age groups. The proportion of people aged between 15 and 24 who are online is estimated to be over 70% worldwide, compared with just 48% of the population overall. In most countries, internet adoption among those aged over 75 is below 10%. These are main findings of chapter one. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for these insightful remarks. Indeed, a picture of, of progress on the one hand and of challenges on the other hand. So thank you very much for this very detailed uh, presentation. I would like to now call on our second speaker this morning, Ms. Esperanza Magbantai, who is a um, senior statistician at the ICT Data and Statistics Division. Thank you very much, uh, sir, and good morning, everyone. So this morning, I'm going to present to you the, re the report, particularly chapters two and three on the ICT Development Index, focusing both at the global results and the regional results. So to start with is the IDI conceptual framework, which depicts the three stages of ICT development. First is on the ICT readiness, ICT use and ICT impact. So ICT readiness is the availability of ICT infrastructure and ICT use is the intensity of ICT usage in the country. So these first two stages refers exactly to the 
first two um, sub-indices that are included in the ICT Development Index. The third one is on ICT impact, and to reach there, you need to have the ICT skills. That is why we have the third sub-index on ICT skills. So the ICT Development Index is divided into three sub-indices, ICT access, ICT use, and ICT skills, which is composed of 11 indicators. These 11 indicators um, that we included in the index this year uses data that were collected from 176 economies. They're referring to data from, uh, from the end of 2016. These data were directly collected from countries in the beginning of this year. As mentioned yesterday, there is a revised set of indicators that will be used in IDI 2018. And more information about these indicators will be presented later on in the EGT session that will be uh, shown to you this afternoon. So the top 10 IDI countries, we heard already that the Iceland uh, topped the IDI ranking this year. This is followed by other economies from Asia Pacific and the rest from Europe. So these countries are top performing because they have high levels of economic development, literacy, and skills that are necessary for their citizens to make full advantage or take full advantage of the use of ICTs. So the other economies, I will read them since uh, I'm not sure whether you can read the screen from the back. We have Iceland, Korea, Switzerland, Denmark, United Kingdom, Hong Kong, China, Netherlands, Norway, Luxembourg, and Japan as the, the, the top 10. The most dynamic countries, which are the countries that have made significant improvements in terms of their uh, values or ranking, are from the middle income developing countries. Most of the growth are coming specifically from the USAB index, particularly from the mobile broadband indicator. So the top two countries we, heard, we saw this morning is Uzbekistan for uh, the change in ranking, while it's Namibia for the change of values. So other countries that have improved uh, a lot in terms of the values includes Namibia, Iran, Gabon, Laos, uh, PDR, Cyprus, Indonesia, Bolivia, Timor-Leste, Turkey, China, Myanmar, Uzbekistan and Nicaragua. So those that are mentioned are the countries that had made significant improvements in terms of their IDI values. However, disparities in IDI values still exist, and we found in this report particularly that LDCs are still falling behind in terms of their ICT developments. So you can see from this map that the high values, so the IDI, we divided them into four groups. There's the low group, which is represented in yellow, medium, which is represented in green, upper, which is represented in blue, and the high group, which is represented by the red colors. So those countries that fall in the low category, we also call them as the least connected countries. And it is to note that 37 out of the 44 countries that fall into these categories are also the LDCs. We have also looked at the differences in terms of the value of the highest ranking country in the IDI and the lowest value of the lowest ranking country in the IDI, and we found that the gap is increasing. So this shows that uh, the countries in this group, the LCC, is uh, still need, need catching up in terms of their ICT developments. So in terms of the regional IDI analysis, so this is basically where we look at the, the progress that are made by countries and we group them according to the ITU regions. What we found is that there are still a considerable differences between geographical regions as well as countries within each region. So you'll see from this chart that uh, the blue ones are from Europe, which um, occupies mostly the highest values in the IDI. Uh, and the rest of the regions are represented in green and in other colors. So um, I will be providing more details in the, the next slides. So as mentioned, Europe continues to lead the way in terms of ICT developments. Most of the countries in these regions are 
uh, above the, the world average and very close to the developed countries average. So the, the developments in this region are, in this region is particularly uh, on their um, household internet access and um, progress in internet use. The two countries that are dynamic in this region includes Cyprus and Turkey, and this is of course referring to the values and their progress in terms of their um, ICT developments. In the Americas, this is the region where improvements are recorded in the middle ranking countries, which are coming from South and Central America, as well as in the Caribbean. So this region is, is, um, is a bit mixed because we have United States and Canada who are uh, top in the region, and then we have a, a one LDC, which is Haiti, at the other end of the distribution. So the top countries in this region in terms of their dynamic movements are Bolivia and Nicaragua. Uruguay is the third. These are uh, countries that had made progress under IDI values as well as Grenada and Suriname. And the progress in this region is mainly coming from mobile cellular and uh, mobile broadband subscriptions. The CIS is uh, the region which is the most homogeneous among the different regions. The values that are uh, referring in this chart from, for, for the countries that are included in this region are almost the same. Uh, and so the range between the lowest and the highest values in this region is very small. Uzbekistan is the, the most dynamic country in this region, followed by Kyrgyzstan, Ukraine, Belarus, and Moldova. And again, the, the indicator that has made great progress in this uh, region it re is referring to mobile cellular and mobile broadband. The Asia Pacific region is the most heterogeneous region where we have the top, um, one of the top IDI countries, Korea, uh, and also economies such as Hong Kong, and also uh, some LDCs that are falling behind in terms of their uh, ICT developments. Iran is the, the country that has made great progress in, their, in terms of their dynamic movement in the IDI, followed by Laos, PDR, Indonesia, Timor-Leste, China, and Myanmar. These are the countries that had made uh, great progress in their IDI values. In the Arab states region, the strongest improvements were seen in the middle income economies. And Algeria, Oman, Kuwait, Lebanon, and Morocco are the countries that has made great progress in terms of their um, IDI performance in terms of the values. And the indicator on mobile cellular and mobile broadband are again the indicators that has contributed to, the, to this dynamic and, and great progress in the region. Africa value for the IDI is about half the global average. This is the region where we can see most of the LDCs, um, although it is worth noting that progress has been made by uh, most of the LDCs, although not at the same speed as other developing countries. The Namibia, Gabon, Mauritius, Zambia, and Cote d'Ivoire are the countries that had made great progress in terms of their uh, IDI values. And this is mainly due to their great improvements in mobile cellular, again, and mobile broadband indicators. So those are the results of the IDI at the global and regional level. And I invite you to check this link available on the screen. This is the values of the IDI, the results of the IDI, which is available through the ITU data visualization tool. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much for this very detailed presentation. And I would like to now call on our third speaker this morning, last but not least, uh, Ms. Lourdes Montenegro, to talk about emerging trends. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Salam. So um, chapter one to three of the MS, MASR 2017 deals with the past and present of ICT development, as you have seen. However, since ICT is constantly evolving at increasingly faster rates, 
we will need to talk about the future of ICT development now. So chapter four of MISR 2017 discusses four emerging ICT trends that are forming a new ICT ecosystem. These are artificial intelligence, big data, cloud computing, and the internet of things. Now, these four ICT trends are discussed comprehensively in the chapter. So I am not going to go into the details of this discussion. Instead, I encourage everyone to read the report and share it with your friends, family, on social media, and everyone around you. So in the report, these trends will be discussed in terms of their context, what they are, what their contribution is to the achievement of sustainable development goals, their uptake in different world regions, as well as what are the enabling policies that can encourage their diffusion. And last but not least, since this is a statistics symposium, potential indicators for tracking progress. So again, I urge everyone to, to read and download and, and, and share the report, and, and, and it will be discussed there in great detail. What I will do is basically just make three important points, just three key takeaways from the chapter, basically. So three things to remember. One, and this is a very important point, there is exponential development of advanced ICTs, exponential. So we're talking about exponential development in artificial intelligence, big data, cloud, and the internet of things. And this exponential development will have massive consequences. So we'll talk a bit more about what those consequences will be. And this is very important for us in the policy world. The second important point that would be important to remember from this chapter would be that there are three, again, three things, the power of three, you know, three things that are needed to harness these advanced ICTs to make sure that countries at all levels of development benefit fully from these advanced ICTs as well as minimize the risks and, 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 and harmful consequences. So first, we have physical infrastructure. Physical infrastructure requirements. Okay. There, you need connectivity services. And last but not least, you need complementary human capital. You need skills. Okay. And then the last key takeaway message from this chapter is that the time to do measurement, to do metrics, for the international community to come up with internationally harmonized indicators and ways of tracking progress in terms of the adoption and application of these new technologies is now. It is now. Okay. So I, I hope you can see clearly, but the, the important point here is that Artificial intelligence, big data, cloud computing, and IAT are closely interlinked with each other. They work together. They work in tandem. They're not alone. They form an emerging ICT ecosystem, basically. So if you're wondering why, okay, think about this. When you talk about artificial intelligence, what is it? It's algorithms and data, okay, that are used to meet certain objectives, whether it's prediction, whether it's certain decisions, okay? It's supposed to work like the human brain, basically. But for that, you need inputs. You need resources. And these inputs come in the form of data, massive amounts of data, which normal computing technology cannot process. So you need cloud services to do that at the moment, okay? So it's being processed in large data centers, in high-performing computing infrastructure. So they work closely in tandem. And Internet of Things creates a lot of data 
real-time data that's streaming all the time, massive amounts of data. So all these four work together, and it's primarily, the, the, the primarily led by artificial intelligence as the key technology. And to just to hammer the point about how exponential this is, I, I'm going to show you a stick figure. That's what we mean by exponential development. So there's a tiny human being there before the curb goes up. Because we don't see the future, we can't see the, ex, you know, the, 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 the massive increase. We, we are at that point where we only see the past. And when we only look at the past, we think it's linear. We're moving in a linear fashion. But according to most um, industry experts, it isn't. It's actually moving really, really fast. And, 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 and if you follow the news, for example, I, I was following uh, the release of new phones, for example. Um, there is now neural processing units in new smartphones, which means that you no longer need data centers to upload the data and process it there. Your phone can do it this year, some phones. Okay. We now live in a world where computer chips are everywhere and they communicate with each other. For example, in a phone, in a, in a car, don't even think about a self-driving car. A normal car, a normal modern car is about 150 to 200 microprocessor controlled systems, including the windshield wipers. And just last year, an artificial intelligence defeated one of the world's best Go players. You know, Go is a game that's said to have more moves than chess, okay? In chess, after the two moves, you only have hundreds of different moves. In Go, you have hundreds of thousands of different moves after the first two moves. So you cannot brute force it. You need the good algorithms, you need good AI to do that. And that was just last year, and it's making even more progress this year. So I will not go into that in more details, because later, tomorrow, very exciting, I'm already plugging it, there will be a session on emerging ICT trends, and it will go into that in more detail. So, so look forward to that. Now, Another key thing to, re to, 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 to remember, as we said, that there are massive consequences. But what are these massive consequences? So two massive consequences, okay? One is that it seems to be that there might be, again, a new digital divide. So we have, we're still dealing with the old digital divide. We're still trying to solve it. We're making a lot of efforts to close it, and, and, and it's working. We're closing it. But new technologies are bringing in new divides, which we have to work on as well. As we can see, for example, this is example data from, from Cisco on cloud traffic in different regions. So we see North America is very high with blue, followed by Asia Pacific. And then we have Western Europe and, and then the rest of the other regions in the world or areas of the world. So it's shaping up to have some implications, global implications. Another example of this particular possibly new divides is, um, this is not in the report, but I just got this uh, last night. It just came in, very new. So this is a chart of publications in artificial intelligence. So if you just go to the journals, to the scientific journals in English, by the way, and you just graph which countries publish the most papers on this new field, you will see these different countries. So you have China, United States, Japan, United Kingdom, Germany, India, Spain, France, South Korea, and Italy, okay? Now remember, this is the technology of the future, okay? So we will have to deal with these new divides and we will have to be careful to make sure that these new divides are also being minimized. The other important implication is that these new technologies have massive consequences 
on the structure of the economy and employment. Okay? In case we don't understand this clearly, let me give an example. Okay? Some countries in the world, for example, like India and the Philippines, have massive outsourcing sectors that rely on ICTs. Okay? Many of those jobs can be automated and done by machines. Doctors can be replaced by machines. Lawyers can be replaced by machines. Many things can be replaced by machines, even at current technology. And it is coming soon. So as policymakers, this is one of the important things that we also need to remember. Now, the question, the second point, the second takeaway message from the chapter is, how do we harness, how do we unleash the power of these uh, new technologies? Okay? So three things. We need a physical infrastructure. They need to be available. They need to be of high quality. So we need to look at the adoption rates of fixed and mobile broadband, the quality of the connection in terms of latency and download speed and all those other measures, international bandwidth, data centers, availability of devices, ownership and use. Then the other important Ingredient is the availability of connectivity services, IoT, um, internet, uh, all IP networks, next generation networks, and then last but not least, complementary user skills. Okay? We need a digitally literate workforce, data scientists, computer scientists, increasingly powerful software that empowers users with appropriate skills. So what is the role for public policy? Of course, there's always a role there. So one key thing is to ensure and facilitate entrepreneurship and innovation. So as you have seen, a lot of the new technologies come from entrepreneurship and innovation, and government can play a role that facilitates that. The other is to make sure that there's infrastructure, that there's sufficient license and unlicensed spectrum, for example, that there's information security and privacy in place so that people are encouraged to use new technologies. And education policy is also very important. And finally, let me close with this. Okay. As we said, the time for metrics is now. We need to start measuring because the new technologies are developing really fast. So once we wake up, it's already done. So how do we move towards new metrics? How do we have new measurements? The thing is, industry and the private sector has filled the void where governments have not yet come up with measures because they need it for their operations. So, but there is no agreed conventions. There's no internationally harmonized statistics and indicators. It's hard to benchmark when you have different sources that disagree with each other. Also, the data is not available wildly. It's behind paywalls. It's inaccessible to many, many users. Now, the good news is that we can use new technologies to harness, to solve the data issue directly from the digital infrastructure and services. And we've seen that from our parallel sessions yesterday very clearly. Networks and sensors and devices could generate trusted databases. And so government and the international sector can curate the data and make sure that they are valid and available. So the public sector can therefore be a facilitator of data collection through open data systems, curator and archiver of data and transparent algorithms. And finally, our role as the international community is to develop internationally harmonized indicators on advanced ICTs now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this outlook on, on emerging trends. We started this session a few minutes late, about 20 minutes late, so maybe we can uh, add 10 minutes past the hour to enable uh, our discussion here. But before we go into the discussion, I would like to make an announcement that is that you all will receive a digital copy, or already are receiving digital copies of the report.
which of course will sidetrack now attention now as you're looking up how you're ranked uh, this year. But um, I'd like to open the floor now for discussion. This was a, a wealth of information, very, very differentiated information. We see enormous progress on the one hand, and we see continuing challenges both with ex regard to the existing technologies as well as with emerging technologies. I am actually uh, quite, I've been around quite some time. I remember the Maitland Commission report in 1981. Who in here remembers that report also? Raise your hands if you do. <laughs> Very few people. At that point in time, ladies and gentlemen, I will call upon you in, in one, just one second. One of the findings was, it was very eye-opening, it really shifted the attention of the global community, that in, at that time, the, the city of Tokyo had more telephones than the entire continent of Africa. And we had not really realized this at this point. And the second finding was that how important information communications technology is for economic development. What progress since then, as it is reflected in this report today. But there was a, uh, an intervention in the, in the middle. Uh, please, the, the floor is yours. Gentleman in the middle first, yes. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, Chair, for giving me the uh, opportunity. Uh, in fact, yesterday we have a sufficient debate on the calculation of uh, the uh, uh, IDI index by the ITU and it has been very well explained by, by the presenters and the Mr. Bra uh, Mr. Sanu himself. Uh, I just want to make a short comment on the, the, uh, the, the uh, presentation of the ITU uh, uh, today. When I see the top 10 countries, uh, uh, of my country, Pakistan, is in the uh, low, uh, yellow area, which is the least connected by, uh, as per the definition of the I ITU, despite the fact that uh, my, my growth rate in the broadband is about 90% about for last many, uh, many months and years. And I just want to make a short comment that if I have to do, uh, to improve the ICT IDI index, I have nothing to do with the ICT, rather just to reduce my population. Thank you. Shukran. In the beginning, I would like to say on the Wafd al-Tunsi, another time, I would like to thank you كافة الوفود وأتمنى لهم إقامة طيبة بيننا. كما أتقدم بالشكر للاتحاد الدولي للاتصالات وأخص بالذكر مكتب تنمية الاتصالات على جودة التقرير المقدم والمهنية العالية المعهودة التي التي تسمى بها هذا التقرير. وفي هذا الصدد فإنه إذا أخذنا بعين الاعتبار التقدم التكنولوجي السريع والاستخدامات الجديدة. في مجال تكنولوجيا الاتصال والمعلومات من ناحية والأهداف التي تم اعتمادها من طرف, من طرف منظمات الأمم المتحدة من ناحية أخرى فإن الوفد التونسي له بعض الاقتراحات في هذا المجال أولا أعتقد أن علينا البدء في وضع وتحديد المؤشرات المرتبطة بالمصفوفة المتقاطعة ما يعبر عنه ب The Crossing Matrix المتكونة من خطوط العمل الإحدى عشر للقمة العالمية لمجتمع المعلومات وأهداف التنمية المستدامة سبع عشر كما, كما يقترح ونظرا لأهمية متابعة تطور المؤشرات كما يعبر عنه ب The Tracking Indicators والذي, والذي عبرت عنه السيدة لورد منذ, منذ قليل فإن التفكير في إمكانية إنشاء لجنة دائمة بهدف رصد المؤشرات التابعة لهذه المصفوفة والمساهمة في التقارير التي ستقدم في سنة 2025 ثم في سنة 2030 على مستوى الجمعية العامة للأمم المتحدة هذا يضمن أن يتم أخذ بعين الاعتبار لهذه المؤشرات ضمن بقية المؤشرات المعتمدة من قبل فريق خبراء منظومة الأمم المتحدة لمؤشرات أهداف التنمية المستدامة وهي the IAEG SDGs. شكرا.
Thank you for this intervention. I had two more interventions, one right to my left, okay. and then one in the back. Why don't you maybe uh, take these two and then I give a chance to the, uh, the Good morning uh, to all of you. Let me first congratulate the countries which have uh, come first and the countries which have improved uh, in their ranking and their score. But I have one submission to make. Last time, last uh, yesterday also, I have uh, pointed out this IDI score and IDI indicator is not that reflecting the true development in a, in a country. It's not reflecting the growth in a country. So in that sense, it seems to be a misnomer for me. And measuring countries which are having diverse geographical area, diverse population, diverse problems, different characteristics, measuring the uh, ranking based on a particular set of indicators of all the 199 countries, I think it's not fair. Uh, there should be some parameters related to the growth should be taken in, into account. It's not the static indicator. It should be a dynamic, how much progress has been made over a period of time. Due weightage should be given to the population, the effort being put in by the country. You know, India is making a lot of effort, lot of investment. It's the second largest network after China in the world. But you see the ranking is coming out to be 134. Do we deserve that ranking? The answer is no. So my request is that there should be, an ind the indicator should be inclusive of the incremental growth taking place every year. Secondly, the new framework has been revised, which is, coming to, which is going to come into uh, force from 2018 onwards. India is not agreeing to all the parameters. And in this regard, we have sent our representation to the uh, Secretary General. Our minister has sent representation to Secretary General that we will be sending contribution on this issue. And uh, so we will uh, we'll be taking up this issue in EGTI and the EGH forum as well. And whatever new indicators are being framed in future, they should take care of the geographical area, population, and terrain. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, so in the interest of time, let me give the uh, panelists maybe a chance to, to briefly respond. And then we have uh, several more interventions. Thank you very much. So I have three questions that I would like to address. The question from our colleague from Pakistan mentioned that the country is one of the LCCs and represented in yellow in the map, and that it does not necessarily take into account the, the progress that has been made in the country and the size of the country. So I, I just want to, to address okay. that also together with the question that is coming from, that came from India in terms of the, the geographical and the, the terrain situation in the country. So yesterday we had already mentioned that um, the IDI uh, does not have necessarily a direct correlation with the geography of the country. And this has, uh, this was one of the results that came out from the, one of the reports on measuring, um, measuring the information society that we did, I think, two or three years ago. Uh, we have done an in-depth analysis also in terms of the, the relationship with IDI and other factors that may contribute or may hinder the developments of ICT developments in countries. So we found out that specifically geography doesn't have a direct impact or direct correlation with uh, IDI values or IDI progress. We can take a country as big as China who has shown uh, big improvements and as well as you know high values in terms of their IDI scores and um, a country which has a similar situation which is uh, still not at the same position. So geography does not necessarily have a direct correlation in terms of the IDI values. Instead, it's the level of, IC, of uh, GNI per capita. 
It's also the level of urbanization in the country, as well as the level of skills of the individuals to be able to use ICTs. So there are other factors, and, one, and, and geography is definitely not one of them. And I would like to really emphasize that, because that is one of the fi main findings of the report that we published uh, a while ago, and it has been coming here uh, in the discussions and questions. Another um, point that I want to mention uh, is to, uh, on the, the comment that came from Tunisia in terms of the, the need to develop indicators and indicators that will be used to track the, uh, the sustainable development goals. Um, this is, of course, uh, uh, an area that we are not forgetting. The, the work will be presented later on in the parallel session. It is a work that is being carried out together with other partners in, of, in, uh, who are members of the Partnership on Measuring ICT for Development. We are putting together a task group that is composed of a number of international organizations as well as experts and countries that will look at ICT indicators in different themes, in different sectors, not just uh, focusing on indicators that are currently included in the SDG monitoring framework. As you may know, we are limited with seven ICT indicators in the framework, and there are other ICT indicators that may need to be tracked for countries to be able to see where they stand in terms of their ICT developments. So I just want to, to stress those points. Thank you very much. Thank you, Esperanza. I now have a, a, an intervention on my right-hand side in the middle of the room. Please do introduce yourself uh, for the rest of us. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Exposant sur le chat. Nous avons tous vu euh, le, pour la carte de l'Afrique la partie jaune où le chat figure. Et puis nous nous occupons 140 quelques positions. Donc ce qui veut dire que il y a la, moi je pense que dans les, les paramètres qu'on a tenus compte, il y a certaines euh, parties qu'on n'a pas tenu compte. Si même on dit euh, la, la géographie ne tient pas compte, mais la superficie, effectivement, de la zone vide tient compte. Nous avons vu, dans plusieurs cas, les petits pays ont pris la première place. Donc, le chat qui est vaste. Et nous avons des, des systèmes de connexion entre les, les villes. Par exemple, les villes, les zones désertiques, où vous avez 300, 400 km à relier par des systèmes de la fibre optique. C'est une dépense colossale, raison pour laquelle euh, la géographie et la distance, elle joue un grand rôle. Et nous demeurons sur, comme proposition de tenir compte dans, le, dans les paramètres euh, qu'ils qu ont fait la planification des de, de ICT, là, c est, c est, cet élément, cet esprit des choses. Parce que nous avons beaucoup travaillé les, nous avons fait les, des systèmes de, 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 de sorte de zones rurales. Nous avons travaillé sur ça. Il y a eu des efforts colossaux qui ont été déployés. Et puis, nous n'avons vu aucun résultat de l'UIT qui a ressorti dans ce, euh, dans ce passage. Donc, c'est très important de prendre en compte ce genre de paramètres. Et puis, euh, c'est dégradant. Chaque fois, on se voit, euh, notre pays, le Tchad, euh, baisse, baisse, baisse. Bien que nous sommes des PMA, mais hein, quand même, il y a des efforts euh, considérables qui ont été déployés. Et c'est pourquoi je demande euh, si nous avons vu d'abord beaucoup de pays euh, qui ont de grandes superficies désertiques, euh, ils, occupent, ils, ils viennent en dernière position, comme euh, venait de dire M. Smaïla hier. Et ça, c'est un problème réel. Où on met à la classification à part de ces pays, euh, avec leur euh, classement, et puis les petits pays, les avancés de leur classement aussi, et puis les petits pays, PMA, plus les pays à grande superficie, de les mettre ensemble dans le système de calcul. Moi, je pense que ça peut nous aider à être classés dans les meilleures positions. Merci. Thank you very much. I had multiple interventions. Now we go uh, in the middle back here, please. I can't, I can't read, given the light, I can't read your country. If you would please introduce yourself. Um, Sapa from Egypt. Okay, first we'd like to thank the Tunisian government for their hospitality. 
Uh, we also would, we would like to congratulate uh, the ITU for uh, uh, the launching of the ninth, ed ninth edition of uh, the Measuring Information Society report. Um, we would like to um, to make just um, a point with regard with what uh, Pakistan and India just said about the population. In Egypt, we have the same problem of uh, the population that under the growth that is being invested and is being happening in Egypt. So this is one point. And uh, we would like the ITU to find a um, solution because many countries are now facing uh, this problem. Um, second, uh, we are very happy with uh, the new technologies that you are now showing um, and they, they are growing worldwide. So that's really nice. But we want, we want to take um, care that the new indicators that are going to be integrated into the new IDI um, should reflect what, what is happening in the majority of the world. We are very aware of, of the technological revolution, but the IDI, I think that it should represent what is happening in the majority of the world, not just the evolving ones. Thank you. Thank you. And I had uh, somebody up here. Yes, please. Uh, Bangladesh. Hello. Yes. Um, thank you, Mr. Moderator. This is Mansoor Al-Sheri from uh, CITC, Saudi Arabia. Um, I believe the IDI that we had, I mean, the ranking based on, is, uh, was set in 2009. And um, ITU and the expert groups, um, plus the subgroup that was working in the IDI that was um, approved um, in the last um, um, meeting for the expert group in Geneva, uh, with the 14 indicators. I think um, we're expecting um, uh, to have some highlights on the new indicators that um, will clear the confusion of the old IDI and moving to the new IDI and the trend of that um, some indicators have changed. And uh, I believe uh, the concern from most of the countries, uh, Bangladesh, uh, from uh, India, from Pakistan, from Egypt, uh, will be more clarify that we are moving towards the new IDI that will be set for the new indicators and the ranking will be approved in a better way that can really measure what the technology is moving to. So um, based on that, I, I would love that uh, we could clarify or just to have on, on the screen the 14 new indicators that will make um, countries more uh, likely to be uh, confident on, of the new ranking, how it's going to be set, and how things will be moving forward from here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I just want to also uh, reemphasize the last point that came from Saudi Arabia. So the results of the expert group extraordinary meeting that was held in March will be presented this afternoon. There will be a slide that will highlight the 14 indicators that were agreed during that meeting. And I fully agree that may clarify some of the concerns, particularly that some of the indicators are not just divided by the population, but instead uh, by the total uh, of that subcategory. So for example, fixed broadband subscription will not just be divided by the population, but it will be instead disaggregated by the types of speed and then divided by the total subscription. So that means if you are doing well in terms of the highest speed uh, broadband subscription, you will be uh, showing your progress out of that indicator. So thank you very much for, for that point. Thank you. OK, we can take one or two more, these three more interventions, and then we have to unfortunately close the sessions of Bangladesh is first, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, from the administration of Bangladesh, we appreciate the effort of BDT and ICT data and statistical division of IT and the expert group members in publishing this report. And uh, we believe that IDI is the best available index uh, to measure the status of ICT development that we have so far. And we especially thank the director BDT for his vision to make this report more relevant for its member countries so that they can track their individual progress. And uh, definitely we understand that some of the countries may have uh, frustration about their ranking, uh, but as Director BDT rightly pointed out yesterday, the individual values of uh, ITI and the sub-index are more relevant in tracking our progress and 
should be looked upon more objectively. So we are happy that uh, Bangladesh is having an increasingly higher index values, and uh, we understand that probably we need to do more to improve it further, especially the coordination with uh, National Statistical Office, NSO, as it came out from our discussion with uh, Dr. Zavazava yesterday. Uh, so we thank again BDT and all the staffs of ITU for this highly valued effort. Thank you. Yes, uh, please, China. Thank you, Chair. Uh, first of all, please allow us to express our uh, gratitude to the work of the BDT. It is a very good uh, report that you can first uh, publish the uh, country file report, I, which I think is uh, uh, it's more uh, fruitable to reflect the uh, development state status uh, in the recent years. We are not, uh, you know, we are not so happy with the outcome of the uh, uh, major learning port to 2017, because we are hungry to to uh, get a look at the uh, quick change in the field of the IDI system, uh, such as uh, as I will want to. I'm willing to uh, support delegates from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh. Uh, there's a uh, concern about the demographic, uh, demographic uh, development status, such as in China, you know, uh, almost two-thirds of the world mobile broadband addition, uh, subscriber addition are coming from China. Uh, we think some of the uh, index can be improved to uh, effectively reflects the uh, market structure. So uh, we are convinced that in the future, in the coming cycle, this uh, IDI system can be improved, uh, can be improved to reflect uh, emerging change of the new uh, technologies and new services such as e-commerce, such as mobile com payment, which are uh, developing very fast in most, uh, in most developing countries. Uh, so uh, we support uh, that more and more uh, countries can be included in the work of EGH and EGTI. We propose that the uh, BDT officials can help different countries from different regions to be uh, actively uh, included in the work of, uh, uh, in the, work of the imp improving uh, IDI systems. We propose that uh, we can evaluate the structure and components of IDI system every two years. You know, it's, it's so long uh, before we can adjust the existing system, IDI system. We think in the future we can adjust or we can modify the structure and the components of IDI system uh, in the uh, coming cycle, in the coming cycle. So we are hoping we can get a, a new outcome which most of the countries can get their inflation, can get their, uh, you know, can get their uh, expected output, which can uh, help them to foster the development of ICT services and innovations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. In the interest of time, please keep your intervention to less than two minutes. Last one, please. Yes. Please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Because this is the first time Indonesia has taken the floor, uh, I would like to congratulate first Uzbekistan, Namibia, Iceland, and Tunisia for all uh, the progress that they have achieved in their IDEA rankings and values. Um, with the new ICT trends that have just been mentioned in the uh, MISR, uh, such as IoT, uh, artificial intelligence, big data, and cloud computing, we assume that this will create a new digital Global, uh, I'm sorry, a new global digital divide. And if they're incorporated into the new ICT indicators in the upcoming, uh, in the upcoming years, 
We assume that many developing countries, such as Indonesia, will be obligated to measure their use on these new ICT trends and technologies. While we see that many developing countries still continue to have problems with their idea values and rankings and solutions on how to increase them. So um, while we see that many uh, developing countries still have problems, such as how to move from 4G technologies to 5G and then uh, analog to digital switch over. So with uh, this in mind, we kindly request the ITU, especially BDT's prudence on this matter and solution on this matter for developing countries. Thank you. Thank you very much um, for your intervention. I would like to give the floor back to the panelists for brief closing statements now, please. Thanks so much for interventions. And uh, first of all, I would like to encourage countries to actively participate in ACTI and EGH meetings. Uh, uh, and activity. ECTIA and EGH uh, are groups uh, in which we discuss new indicators. Uh, we discuss composition of IDI and all, all, all these issues what uh, we discuss now. Uh, we uh, had very long discussion regarding uh, composition of IDI. We had subgroup uh, uh, we represented, uh, representing uh, all regions, developed and developing countries, uh, which worked on this issue. And this subgroup reached consensus. It was not easy. It's, we reached consensus. And later, these results were introduced to ECTI EGH uh, extraordinary meeting. We had very hard discussions, but again, we reached consensus. The new composition of IDI, I believe, is much better than the existing one. And uh, 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 because IT uh, is very uh, dynamic, dynamic sector, and I agree that uh, we need revisions of IDI. And next year, we will publish the, uh, IDI regarding this new methodology, which reflects and captures the development of ICI ICT sector. And uh, uh, just to comment, uh, before joining ITU, I was part of that, uh, those expert groups. We worked during year permanently on new indicators, on composition of idea, etc. cetera. Uh, ITU is uh, secretariat. You uh, countries decided uh, via uh, ACTI and EGH which indicators should be collected, which methodology should be used, what should be composition of IDI, and uh, how can we improve it. So please be active in ACT and EGH activity, and uh, IT will, pro uh, will do its best to support this activity. Thanks so much. Esperanza, did you have a closing statement? Um, I just want to also emphasize the importance of um, providing your inputs through the expert groups. Uh, it may not be necessarily through the face-to-face -face meeting, but the expert groups work throughout the year through the online discussion forums. So I encourage everyone to provide your inputs and actively participate in the different discussions, not just on the index, but also in the def defining the indicators that are uh, to be collected in countries and at the same time it may go to the IDI in the future. And lastly, uh, the most important is to encourage countries to collect the data for those indicators. We are defining indicators, but we are still having uh, some challenges in getting timely and reliable data from countries. So it's always a big, big, big struggle for us to have complete data sets that will enable us to calculate the IDI and to include as many countries as possible. So um, I, I, I just want to end at that point, and uh, I would like to thank everyone for the very interesting uh, interventions. Thank mm. you. Lourdes, did you have some final words, please? Yes. Um, I'll just want make um, a few important points. Um, one, we highly encourage coordination among the different ICT stakeholders, the NSO, the National Statistics Office, the telecom regulators, the ICT ministries to work hand in hand to ensure that you have the data, 
to track your own progress, not necessarily just for the IDI, but more importantly for your own national objectives and goals. This is also very important. Uh, the other important point is that it does take time to develop internationally harmonized indicators. So, so perhaps I might have overemphasized the idea, but when I say now, it means we start thinking about it and we start working towards it. But when we say developing new indicators, it may or may not necessarily be included in the IDI, depending on the, the, uh, what the member states actually agree on, what, what the consensus is. I think um, I just would like to close with the theme of uh, what I have uh, discussed, presented for chapter four. Implications are important because these new technologies are coming very soon and they are unlike the old ones. So think about it, many of the countries in the world are yet to industrialize, yet to have a very strong production sector, yet to have very high levels of, un of employment. So when these new technologies are able to get rid of, of existing jobs, what will happen to countries who do not yet have a large share of the pie? How, how will we deal with that? How can, how can countries, what will be the next ladder of development? So, which is why it's important to think about these things now and start this conversation. That's all, thank you. Well, thank you very much. This session covered a lot of ground and there's indeed much good news. I want to re-emphasize this, that every country has improved over the past observation period. Uh, there's also, of course, indication of many remaining challenges that, that need to be addressed in the coming years. Indicators help us focus this discussion and each country has to focus on its own particular unique situation. And I think the, the country data that are now provided provide additional uh, information and food for thought to address those issues. So without further ado, then I would like to turn the floor back to His Excellency. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, be in this uh, assistance and this deep discussion. And it's uh, clear that uh, we are in the end of one cycle life or life cycle, and we start another uh, life cycle. Uh, the new life cycle will take care uh, about the new technologies that are changing every day, but also we have to take care about the improvement of the process from countryside and from the ITU side, from the expert side. So the process has to be more clear and more, uh, more uh, adapted to the new technology and the changes uh, from ITU side. And the process has to be also clear from the countries because if you don't have a, a responsible for collecting this information, if you don't know the schedule of the collection of the information, if we don't know that 15th of August this year was the cut dates for the uh, information that will be used in this indicator, we cannot catch up. So both effort has to be put in this new uh, cycle life. Hope we will improve all this for the benefit of uh, all the countries and uh, for the benefit of this institution. So thank you very much again. Thank you for the team, for, uh, for the moderator and the, for the presentation.